Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build your own custom pawn sensing. The reason that um, you might want to do that is in the last tutorial we were building a guardian turret like from Breath of the Wild and um, this guy's pawn sensing is, well as far, as far as I know, like pawn sensing in general if you put it inside of the actor or in an AI controller um, it's just as a generic component which always faces forward on the x-axis of the actor so you need to rotate the entire actor to get the pawn sensing to update its rotation with it um, if you build your own pawn sensing in a component which I'm about to show you how to do um, you can actually attach that pawn sensing to um, say like it's your actor's head or its eye or whatever and its rotation can update as you rotate the different components of the actor rather than rotating the entire actor um, and just in general, like it's just a cool thing to do. Like you'll you'll learn a bit about you'll learn a couple of cool different things. It's just it's just fun to to try and build things yourself, I guess. Um, and also you'll have a bit more control over it. Just in general, like you'll have different parameters that you'll be able to tweak, and it's just cool to see how things work. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm just going to build a new folder in the content browser called uh, Pawn Sensing. We're probably not going to need a whole lot of stuff, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go new blueprint class and I'm going to create a scene component which is just going to be called custom pawn sensing component and I'm going to open that up uh, before I do that actually let's just well, I will go over here and I might just create a new dummy actor and just call this uh, it can be a character and this can just be called custom pawn sensing character now we are going to be using a couple of things today that I've set up in previous tutorials but it's not a whole lot and if you haven't seen any of those tutorials don't worry because um, I'll show you I'll show you what we've done and if you are interested in learning how to do it um, I'll put a link to the tutorials and I'll let you know which ones you'll need to see to learn how to do what as we go so for this custom character let's just give him a static mesh give him a box a big box bod and I'm just going to add another static mesh and just give him a face so we know which way is forwards. So I'm just going to put that out in the front like that and then just put a little ball. So that's that's his face. Um, now to give him his pawn sensing component we're going to go add component and we're just going to type in custom pawn sensing component and that's it, easy as that. And we're just going to attach that to the static mesh here which is his face and I'm going to attach his static mesh to his other static mesh. So this can be bod and this can be fuck. <laughs> fuck. It's not even funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. So, his custom pawn sensing, let's just reset the location there so it's in the center of that. And that's where he's going to be sensing from. And as we rotate him in the pawn sensing, it's going to update. Okay, so let's go and build his pawn sensing component. Um, first thing that we'll do is we'll have a custom event, which could just be called begin sensing. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a, I think it's called a, oh, it'll be a line trace, I guess, actually. So let's just type in, um, draw debug cone to begin with. And this is just going to be to demonstrate what his sensing is going to look like. Let's actually go begin play. And then we'll say begin sensing off of that. So now he'll automatically begin sensing when play begins. Okay, so the origin of the sensing, let's say get or, or get transform, get world transform. So this is of the scene component, which is this thing here. So we'll get the world transform of that, split that, and then that can be the origin. The direction that we're going to be sensing in is going to be the forward vector of the component. So get forward vector, that's the direction. Now the length, this is going to be our pawn sensing range, so let's promote that to a variable. Uh, make that public as well. Now the angle width, the angle width and the angle height will both be the same thing. So this can be, um, what do you call this in, oh, we'll just call it, what, pawn sensing, pawn sensing cone angle. That'll do. So that's that's sort of like the width of how much you can see, like his peripheral vision. And we can plug that into the height as well because you don't want it to be asymmetric. Number of sides doesn't really matter. 
uh, line color doesn't really matter, duration for how long we want this cone to be visible for. Um, let's just make that the tick interval. So if we have, um, we'll have sensing interval here. So say his pawn sensing interval is like 0.5, we'll draw one of these cones every 0.5 seconds. This isn't always going to be visible, this is going to be just for us to see where he is sensing at any given time. Now the thickness of the line, we can just make it like 10 units or something like that. Okay, now we need to go and set all these parameters. So let's give the pawn sensing range, um, that can be, I don't know, 2000 for now. The current angle can be 45, that's fine, or maybe, yeah, 45, that's fine. Now the sensing interval can be uh, 0 0.5 seconds. Now when we begin sensing, um, this is going to constantly be firing, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this down here, and this is going to be a new custom event, and this is going to be called uh, sense, I guess, like that. So that's going to be called sense, and when we begin sensing we're going to set a timer by event that's just going to be hooked onto that and then the time will be our sensing interval so we'll drag that in control drag hit looping and then off of the return value we'll save a reference to that and call that uh, sensing timer ref so we can cancel that later if we want it okay so that should be functional now so if we go ahead and chuck this guy into the map let's just see which way he's facing We'll have him facing that way for now. Okay, so that's his pawn sensing. You can see the length of it out here like that. That's how far he's going to be able to see. Um, and that's his that's his 45 degree sight radius that we've set in. So if we were to change... Oh, by the way, so if we go into our character blueprint here, we can actually change all those variables we set just here. Now, you'll see the ones that we made public are all there, but there's also the sensing timer ref, which is not something that we're able to change. What we want to do to keep things organized is if we go into here, we could create a new category called, uh, I don't know, toggleable, and then put all of our variables that are public inside of that. Okay, so now if we go into this custom pawn sensing thing again, um, and you click on, yeah, click on your custom pawn sensing component, you can see down here in toggleable, we've got all the things that we could change. So we could change his sight radius to maybe 3000. We could make his, um, sensing current angle to maybe 90 so he's got like full peripheral vision and his sensing interval can just remain the same that's fine so now you can see his sight uh, his peripheral vision is wider and you can see that it goes out a lot further than it did last time as well so this is where you can see and that's our guardian over there about to shoot at me and blast my fucking brains out no I'm too far away that's okay now um, we can go ahead and settle these back to the default now, that's fine. Let's just go back and change this line thickness because that was a little bit thick. I'm going to change that to maybe 5. Now I guess we can, now that we've got this going, we can actually do the, the sensing. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to do a line trace by channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to set this guy a target. We'll set him a pawn sensing target and he can only, we're only going to have it so we can only have one target at a time for now um, and that's just going to be the player and what he's going to do is he's going to do a line trace from the pawn sensing component to the player and see if you can hit him one so if there's no obstacles in the way that's going to be the first test the second test is going to be is the angle between the line from us to the player is that within the the cone and if it is then that's the second test satisfied so is within the peripheral vision and then the third test is is the the hit result is the length of the the trace less than the range so there's three tests I think that we're going to need to do so this debug cone by the way we can just chuck a branch here um, because we don't want this to actually show up in the game so we can and we don't want it to show up even in the editor when we're when we're testing because it might be annoying so we're gonna add, add a variable here and this is going to be um, debug question mark and if that's true, go ahead and draw the debug cone. If that's not, then let's just add a reroute node there and hook that up into that, like that. And then we can just have this skip over that. And by default, uh, let's make that public first. By default, let's have that to false. And then we also want to have that in the toggleable tab because that's a changeable variable. 
Okay, 10 minutes. I got a feeling this might be a bit longer than I thought. That's okay. It is cool to do stuff like this, like just building things from scratch to see how they work. I've said that before, but <laughs> it's important. Um, I'm just going to take a sip of my water. Hold up. Okay, so the start of the line trace will say get uh, get world location of the scene component. That's going to be the start. The end is going to be get actor. Oh, so we, we can't do that. We're going to need to create a variable here, which will be um, target pawn, target pawn boo, target pawn, which is going to be of type pawn, uh, pawn object reference. And that, um, for now, let's just set that on begin play. So that can just be set here like that. When play begins, we'll just say get play a pawn. And that's going to be our target pawn. But, I mean, you could set that, you could have another system where you could dynamically change the pawn depending on, like, whatever is attacking this particular character or whatever, but let's just not get into that. So the target pawn is always going to be the character. So if we drag our target pawn in here like this, we can say get location, and that's going to be the end of the trace. So we're going to do a trace from us to the target, which is the player. Trace channel is visibility. I don't know what that is. Um, actors to ignore. Let's make an array here. We always want the owner to be ignored. So let's say get owner. I don't think we'll need any other actors to ignore at the moment. Um, debug, draw debug type. Let's promote that to a variable actually. And just call this trace debug type. And we can make that toggleable as well. Compile, save, um, set that to public. And now by default that can be none, but we could have that for duration if we wanted to. So we could see where the traces were going and what they looked like and etc. Um, okay, so now, if there is a hit, let's break the hit. Oops, break. Break the hit. Maybe we even want to... Maybe we could save the hit even, but let's not do that now, actually. Let's just leave this like this. Um, okay, so this is where we need to test all of our different conditions. Actually, let's save that hit, because we're going to be using this stuff later. So, what we could do... We could just save this all into a big old function. Let's save this into a big old function and just call this um, sense for target. Just like that, big old function. So now what we can do is if we promote, we can promote this to a local variable and this is going to be called current hit result. And then we can put that down there and then hook that up into that. Or even if we wanted to, we could just split this. That's pretty cool. And then we can drag that wherever we want. Um, that can't go there, actually, because there might not always be a hit result. So that needs to be first, and then this needs to be here. If there's no hit, which should never be the case, actually, so let's just put a print string here, and then just say uh, no hit from custom pawn sensing. Uh, something important to point out, you need to have your collision on your character to be block all on the capsule so just I'll show you what that looks like really quick if you know exactly what I'm talking about just hit that right arrow key and skip ahead but if you go to capsule component um, it needs to be block all dynamic rather than pawn otherwise these line traces won't actually hit it so if if it's set to pawn then this is going to return false and you're just going to get this message um, so now that we've got that set to block all we can you, the hit result is going to be true and we can hit, set the current hit result to the out hit from that I might take a break soon and get some breakfast because I haven't eaten yet and I am fucking hungry and you need food for brain power but let's just keep going a little bit further so how are we going for time actually 15-ish minutes that's good, that's good so now we need to run all the different tests so the first test that we need to do is is let's, do, let's just check well what's the most unlikely or what's the most likely one probably that they're out of range so let's say let's get our pawn sensing range and let's just check uh, is there a distance here current hit result distance 
let's do a test to say is less 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 than or equal to the pawn sensing range. All right, this is the first test. So put a branch up here like that. So is the distance of the trace from us to the player? No, that's just the hit result actually. So maybe the first thing that we want to do is we want to check that the um the first thing we want to do is we want to check if the hit was actually the player. That's probably most important. So let's get the current hit result, split that, and where it says current hit result um, actor, we're just going to check if that is equal object to the player, the target pawn, like that. So was the hit the player? Now the cases that it wouldn't be was would be if there was like a wall blocking us and the player. So then this would return false. And then what we could do down here is we could have a print string. Um, and you know what, actually? Let's just have a new function here and just call this debug message. Because we're going to be using a few of these. Let's have a branch like that. And then have debug like that. And then if debugging is set for tr to true, we're going to have a print string. And then that's going to be in there like that. Okay, so now if we go back to sense for target, now if it's false, we're going to have, what do we call it? Debug message. So we're going to put that down like that. And the message that we're going to say is um, custom, oh, well, pawn sensing is blocked by an object. So if we set our debug message to true, if we want to see what's going on, if our pawn sensing isn't working, then this will now be enabled and we'll start getting print strings um, to let us know when the pawn sensing is failing. So when the hit actor isn't the target pawn. Okay, so now the next test. Is the distance... So assuming that the target the target hit is the player character, is the distance of the trace less than the pawn sensing range? If false, we'll put our debug message down here and we'll say uh, pawn sensing hit result was out of pawn sensing range. Okay. Now, if that's true, uh, if you left click and hold B, you can add a branch really quick. That's a nice little tip. So the next test uh, would be, this is the trickiest one, is we need to check is the angle within the cone. So what's the best way to do this? You know what? I'm actually going to take a break for breakfast and then I'll come back and I'll do this. So see you guys in a sec. Alright, I'm back, and I did a little bit of research in the meantime about how to get the angle between two vectors, which we need to use for for this thing here. What we need to do is we need to determine the angle between um, the vector, the forward vector of this component, and the angle of the line trace. So the way that we do that, to determine the angle, um, hang on, I just need to find my browser, my microphone's in front of my screen, so... Uh, this thing here, this is what we need to use. So in our case, we're going to be using normalized vectors. So the magnitude of A equals the magnitude of B, which is 1. So we just need to use, uh, to get the angle, we just need to use the inverse cos of A dot B. And A dot B, in our case, is just going to be, well, A is going to be the forward vector of our, of our thing. So we can say get forward vector, oops, wrong one get forward vector of our scene component, that's A, and the other vector that we're getting the angle between is going to be a unit direction vector from the start of the trace to the end of the trace, so these two here. So if we want to get, uh, sorry, not like that, this one here, this is the unit direction vector. Now if we want to get the um, the angle between them, we need to take the we need to get the dot product of this, and then we need to get the inverse cos of this. So a cos, and we want it in degrees. Degrees is just much more intuitive to understand. Okay, so what we want to test is is this angle less than or equal to less than or equal to the pawn sensing cone angle. If it is, then we can see 
Oops. Oh my god, I'm fucking making a mess here. If it is, then we can see. If it's not, let's put a debug message, and this can be... Let's append this, actually. And this can be, um... Pawn sensing target out of peripheral vision. And then what we can do is I'm just going to put in B here, angle, angle equals, and then I can just plug that into that just there. So we can get a reading of the angle as well. Okay. Now then, so this is all in a function. So what we could do, because what we need to what we need to have coming out of this is a boolean to see whether or not we can see the target. So let's add a new local variable in here, and let's just call this uh, can see question mark. That's a local variable, by the way. I keep forgetting if I'm recording or not. I've got a no, I don't really have a bad habit of not recording, but I've done it before. So now maybe we don't actually need that there. Let's actually get rid of that, and instead what we could do is we could just put a return node. Return node onto true. And then on the output here, we can put the can see here. So we could say, oops, can see question mark. Um, if all those tests are passed, then can see is true. Otherwise, it's going to be false there. Hmm... I don't want to copy that node too many times, so what we're going to do is we are going to use a variable, and we are going to get rid of that. So let's just put can see. I'll, I'll explain why I'm doing it this way in a second. So can see, we're going to set that to true just there, like that. Well, what's going on here? Oh, we need to refresh that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so when we when we start this, when we start this function, I'm going to have can see default to false. And now, if any of these tests fail, then the function's going to end there, or it'll end here, etc., etc., and can see will still be false. If all of these tests return true, then can see gets set to true, and then the function ends as well. Whenever there's no more execution pins in a function, the function just automatically ends and carries on. So rather than pasting that return node at the end of every single one of these tests, we can just have it once at the end like that okay but then what we need to do is we do need on the return node we need um let's add the return node in oh fuck so maybe i do need the return node god that's annoying um mm, surely there's a better way no okay we do need the return node lol well unless we just have it like this and then, if I delete... No, okay, I think we do need it like that. Oh, okay, so we do need to put these at the end of all of them. That's annoying, but, you know, whatever. Here I'm thinking I'm being all smart and shit. So I'm just copying the return node to the end of each of these different thingamabobs. Okay, that's all. So now what we can do is we'll have a branch off of this. Now we just need to determine what we're going to do with the data. Well, let's just test that this works, actually. So maybe let's delete that and let's just put a print string. And the string can just be true or false. So let's just see if this is actually working and then we'll decide what we're going to do with the data. Okay, I'm just going to have a drink. Hold on. Okay, false, 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 and we don't have the debug home. If we walk inside, true, 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 true. Damn, it's actually working. And then false, that range must be 45. Okay, wow, it actually worked. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, so let's set our trace debug type for duration and the debug on, just so I can show you sort of what's going on here. So he is doing his traces to me right now. Oh, that guardian dude can fuck off. Um, and you can see his pawn sensing cone radius out in front like that. So, the test that's failing right now is that we're out of the peripheral vision angle. 
Should that be the test that's failing? Oh yeah, so the hit is definitely us, that was the first test. The second test is, are we within the range, I think, which we are. And now the, the final test is, are we out of the angle? So now you can see the angle is reducing as we walk closer to this. And then as we walk inside, we start getting true. And the message goes away. Now what if we walk out of range? There we go, now we're out of the sight range. So you can see the end of the sight radius here. So we're out of the sensing range, and if we walk in, now you can see us again. Beautiful, and I wonder, let's just test if objects in the way work as well, which I'm pretty sure they will, but let's just see. I can't believe this actually works, that's genuinely amazing. Okay, so now if we walk in front of here, pawn sensing is blocked by object, and then if you walk out of here, you can see us again. Oh, beautiful, that's amazing. Okay, well we can close that down now. I mean, we probably could end the tutorial right here. I mean, this is pretty much it. Now, it just it's up to you what you want to do with the result here. So, like, you do, um, for, for our case, what we're going to do is we're going to send this back to the behavior tree, actually. Um, if he has a behavior tree, which this guy actually doesn't at the moment, but that's all good. So, what we would do is if we wanted to send this result to a behavior tree, is in a previous tutorial, we set up... Um, what did we set up? We set up a My AI Controller. And inside of this, we had our own pawn sensing sort of mechanism in here. So if you wanted to use this AI controller with the custom pawn sensing, is what you do on here is you just say, uh, get, actually, you know, we wouldn't do that. What we'd do is we'd put it on the begin play here. We'd say, um, get owner. If you are following along with the series, this will be important for you to do, so follow along with this. Um, because I'm going to turn this, in, I'm probably going to turn this tutorial series into a bunch of different AI, all using the same logic, and we're just going to build on it and build on it and build on it until we've got all kinds of different crazy shit going on. Um, so if we get the target owner, we'll say get components, get component by class, and the cut class that we're going to be getting is custom pawn sensing component. Now, if that's valid, uh, is valid, sorry, with the question mark is the one we want. If that is valid, then what we're going to do... Actually, you know what? We don't want that one. Let's get the other one. Is valid with the boolean pin. And then we're going to promote that to a variable. And call that is using custom pawn sensing. So we set up this whole AI controller in the first tutorial, by the way. So if you want to learn how to set up an AI controller that you can use across all of your AI in your game, or at least most of them, probably all of them, that does everything from like pawn sensing to setting up behavior trees and um, setting blackboard variables and things like that, then watch the first tutorial. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just checking if the actor that owns this AI controller has a custom pawn sensing component, and if it does, it's going to set this to true. If it doesn't, that'll be false. And then what we'll do over here is we'll only have this pawn sensing working if, can we actually, maybe instead of doing that like that, can we just stop the pawn sensing? That'd be a cooler way to do it. Is there like a stop, pause? Let's see, if we click on this here, is there like an enable button? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, okay, well, we'll set this variable there. And then what we'll do on the pawn sensing over here is we'll just have a branch. And if we are using custom pawn sensing, so we want to use a not boolean here. We want the reverse. So are we not using custom pawn sensing? If that's true, then we'll continue on with our normal pawn sensing. If we are using custom pawn sensing, which will result on the false node there, then don't do any of this because all of these blackboard variables and things like that are going to be updated from this custom pawn sensing in here. So what we can do now is we could probably just copy that, I guess. We'll copy all of that and just put this in here. Um, but you know, I probably will do that again just so I can show you how to do that. If, you, if you're not interested and you just want to copy, just go ahead and skip, but I'm just going to show you how to create it. So if we can see, what we're going to do is we're going to set update blackboard, oops, update bb key. Now this is a function we set up in the first tutorial, but basically all it's doing is if we have it set to boolean, it's a function in a function library that we built. 
if it's set to boolean, all it's literally going to do is just find the blackboard key with the key name that you've given it and then set it to the value that you've ticked for boolean. It won't use the rest of these inputs unless you pick one of them. So we're going to set this for boolean. The boolean that we're going to be setting is on our blackboard here, which is can see target question mark, which I might just double click and then copy. And I can close that and I can close my AI functions and I can go back to my pawn sensing component. And we're going to be updating the can see target. The AI controller, um, we need a reference to the AI controller, that's very important. So we'll get the owner of this component and then we'll get the AI controller. And then we'll plug that into there like that. Now, can see target bool is set to true. So, this here, um, you know what we could do actually is we could just plug that straight into there like that, and that'll pretty much just do the job for us, I think. So, whenever this returns true, this is constantly going to be sensing. Whenever this returns true, custom pawn sensing on the blackboard will be true and whenever it returns false it's false easy um, okay so maybe I guess the next thing to do would just be to, to set up the AI controller with this guy here and just to see if um, his blackboard is actually changing so to do that let's just give him a controller and stuff uh, to give him a controller we go click on his name thing up there AI control class needs to be my AIC. We want him to be placed in the world or spawned. Um, on begin play, actually, let's just go to one of the old AI that we've built so we can copy the logic from the start of that. Cast to my AIC and set it up. And that's all we need. So let's just copy that and go into here. So all we're doing is getting a reference to ourselves, getting an AI controller, which is the thing that we just set in there which is a my AI controller and then we're using that cast to node to set it up and all it's doing when it's setting up is just setting a well a pawn sensing target which is irrelevant now because we're using that so it doesn't matter but we do want to run the behavior tree so the behavior tree we set here so we can make that public and we can make this guy a behavior tree this is the end of the custom pawn sensing tutorial by the way guys this is just me showing you how to integrate it now integrate it into your AI so we need to give this guy a behavior tree which is an artificial intelligence behavior tree Custom Pawn Sensing CPS, I guess that makes sense. CPS BT, just because I can't be bothered typing. And we're just going to have a wait. Oops, no, we can't do that. We need to have a selector node to select a behavior from top priority on the left down to the lowest priority on the, on the right. And the, pro the only priority that we're going to be having or the only thing that we're going to have in there is wait. And we need to make sure that his blackboard is set up, which will be AIBB. AIBB, why aren't you working, motherfucker? Oh, okay, it's working just there, but it's not showing up there. I don't know. Who cares? Because I, I say who cares because we've got... It's got our variables there, so it must be working. Um, so now, when this guy begins play, he'll run his behavior tree, which we are going to set to his CPS BT. And now his blackboard should be updating. So let's open up his blackboard and just dock that in the window with the rest of everything like that. And then if I go ahead and hit play, um, and I hit tab, sorry, not tab, uh, yeah, no, I want to I hit windows. I want to just get this and hit windows and the arrow key to put that out on the right. And then I want to get my game window and then hit windows and left to put that on the left. And now if you look, let me just get my cursor back. If you look, can see target there is set to false, okay, because we can't see. Now if I walk in front of him, it's set to true. And so was recently seen actually, that's interesting. And now it's toggling between two and false. Some weird shit's going on there. So I've got a feeling that his pawn sensing in the AI controller is still actually functioning. So let's have a look at this. Get owner return value from AIC uh, Okay, so get owner, that doesn't seem to be working for some reason, so what would have happened then was this wouldn't have been set to true, and then this would have been continuing to run, which was why we were getting such retarded results for the pawn sensing. 
So, mm, give me a sec. Let me just think about this. Why wouldn't the owner be valid? All right, give me a sec. I'll figure this out and I'll I'll come back. Okay, I think I figured it out. Basically, the second I stopped the bloody video. Um, so we're getting a component by class from an actor. Target is actor. So this needs to be get controlled pawn, and then the target is the controller, which is ourself, which was already there. So let's give that a try. So now, if I go back into here, let's open up our behavior tree again. Um, I'm just going to hold Windows and right on the arrow key thing to do that. And then if I just play this in the selected viewport for now, you can see that can see target is set to false. And then if you walk inside, it's set to true. And now it's set to false when we're in front of this. And now it's set to true, set to false, etc. Okay, so that's working. That's working beautifully. It's updating the blackboard. So now that this is updating the blackboard, we could, we could use that to drive a whole bunch of different behaviors. So... We could use that to drive a whole bunch of different behaviors. We could have like a node here, a sequence node, which will say like uh, add decorator blackboard type. Can see target is set. So if can see target is set, then blah 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 blah. Do this, and if it's not set, then this will abort. And go back to do that. So if we were to have a look at this again now, there we go. You can see that we're we're being seen. So he's going to have one one tree of behaviors. And then if we do this, he's aborting that and he's doing another tree of behaviors. So there we go. Now we've got custom pawn sensing driving our driving our behavior tree. Um, and that's just about everything. But yeah, like I said, so the pawn sensing is running just from this component here. So you could you could rotate this ball. You could rotate this ball like this. And now his pawn sensing would be coming out to the side like that. So let's have a look at that. See that? Now his pawn sensing is coming out there. So, like, the way that you could use this is you could have, like, a, um... Well, in the case of our Guardian that we've, that we've built over here, is if I just click on him and then I open up his blueprint like this, um, in the case of this guy, we could have his pawn sensing attached to that eye, and we could have his head rotating like this, and his pawn sensing will update with his head. Um, you could have, like, a skeletal mesh of an enemy with, like, a with a head on him and he could turn his head with his animation and his pawn sensing will update with his animation so that's that's the benefit of using this little system so let's just na um, label some of this stuff so I'm just going to comment this and just call this begin play uh, this is begin sensing and this is sensing logic so we could also have another event in here and this could just be uh, stop sensing like that and literally all we need to do for that is just clear and invalidate timer by handle like that um, and that's it I think so let's just comment that oops sorry stop sensing and you could call this from like a behavior tree for example you could get a reference to this component and then tell him to stop sensing if something happens and he gets blinded or like whatever um, and then this whole pawn sensing thing will stop um, but yeah like you could you could also have like a behavior tree task that toggles the parameters of these like maybe in your behavior tree you could have like a um, when you see the target for example maybe you could have a parallel node a simple parallel I'm just going to dock this because it seems to run slower when I have multiple windows open you could have a simple parallel node and the parallel could be um, a task that while you can see the player, the um, where is it? While you can see the player, maybe his sensing sensing range increases, um, or maybe like the peripheral vision decreases or increases or something. And then when he loses sight, then it goes back to normal. Like there's there's a bunch of different shit you can do with this. Um, you got like full control over how how it works. And you can also add it to any different enemy as well. Like all you literally need to do is just drop the component into the blueprint wherever you want it, and then. It's, it's functional, it's ready to go. Um, cool, so I think that's it for this, guys. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. Um, in the next tutorial, I think I might show you how to set that up with the Guardian here. 
and we might also build a Guardian Skywatcher. I might start doing some physics tutorials. I'll show you how to use some um, physics movement and get your enemies flying around in the sky. And what we'll do is we might build a Guardian Skywatcher from Breath of the Wild. So one of these guys with the rotating heads, he could fly around up in the sky, he can use the custom pawn sensing, and he could use the Guardian laser that we've built for that too. So I'm going to leave that there guys. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.